காலத்துக்கு பொருத்தமாக இருப்பது வந்து எல்லாத்துக்குமே அவசியம் அது தொழிலுக்கு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப அவசியம் அதை பற்றி தான் நம்மளோட அடுத்த ஸ்பீக்கர் பேச வராரு திரு ராஜசிங்கம் லெட்ஸ் வெல்கம் திரு ராஜசிங்கம் ஃபவுண்டர் அண்ட் எம்டி ஆஃப் பிரிக்ஃபீல்ட்ஸ் ஏஷியா காலேஜ் ஹாய் வணக்கம் ஸோ நைஸ் டு சீரியா ஆக்சுவலி ஸ்டில் சம் பீப்புள் இயர் லெட்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆஃப் ஐ தே இனிஷ் ஆஃப் மீ ஸ்பீக் அபவுட் சோஷியல் மீடியா மார்க்கெட்டிங் சம்திங் ஐ ஆக்சுவலி நோ நத்திங் அபவுட் சின்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலி ஆர் பீப்புள் ஸ்பெஷலிஸ்ட் டு டூ தேட் ஸோ ஐ ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டாக் அபிட் அபவுட் ஆண்டர்பிரனர்ஷிப் இட் பி வெரி ஜென்ரல் பட் ஜஸ்ட் சம் திங்ஸ் எவ்ரி ஒன் அவர்ஸ் as an entrepreneur i think a lot of you all are running your own businesses these are some of the things that we need to to look at okay so to start off i'm not going to look at what's there's only one slide but i'm not going to show it to you now i'll show it to you all after this so very quickly i'll run through things the biggest challenge we all face every one of us is how to stay relevant how are we going to stay relevant because in the old days companies would last average you know like a much longer time of life span now snp rankings show that even more than 15 years is very tough for a company to last for that matter alibaba their goal is to last for 102 years because they were set up in 1999 and they want to be around 102 so they could say that they actually spanned across three centuries of course just one year in the third century and one year in the first and 100 years in the middle so what i wanted you all to speak to you all today about is how do businesses stay relevant in this rapid changing world okay and there are a few things i want you all to look at the very first thing every business should have is a purpose you should find your purpose so if you look at amazon their purpose is very simple it is to be the most customer centric company in the world and they build everything around their customer not profits around their customer and it's that dogmatic thing over years before they actually made profits but that was their purpose if you look at alibaba it's to be around for 102 years and to do whatever necessary to stay there for us Although the announcement is Brickfields Asia College, actually we're not part of BAC Education. So we have Brickfields Asia College, IITT College, Reliance College, BAC Singapore, Veritas University. It's now a 25, started off with one company, it's now 25 different companies looking at to see totally but with one purpose, transforming lives through education. So whether we are teaching thousands of single mothers, 200,000 kids free tuition online, whatever it is, but it's using education as a means to transform lives. So the very first thing, if you want your business to last and be relevant is, find your purpose. What's the purpose behind your organization? That's number one. Number two is your values. Every organization, if you are the founder, the organization's values will depend on the founder. You have to have your values there. These values will be your moral compass, where you'll decide what you will and will not do in your quest to make money. You have to have clear values. whether it's integrity accountability you know empathy uh, professionalism five or six values you can go it's not for me to tell you what values you should have as an organization but you go and find what values do you want to be there at every single level of your organization from the ceo right down to everybody there everyone what are the values you want to portray so the second thing every organization should have is clear values because this is your moral compass you will know what you will and you will not do to be there so you won't say off and do things which are illegal which are immoral which are not right that don't resonate with your values now that's the second thing so after purpose values the third is relevance the biggest challenge everyone faces whether you're a country a company an individual like you me is how we're going to stay relevant if you look at countries a lot of countries were once india china for that matter were ancient superpowers they were far more developed and civilized than the western world in the earlier days and then went down then you see other superpowers came up and now as those powers india and china fighting back to come back as the next super economic powers in the world it's cyclical everybody has their day and you go off not just a country a company if you look at you'd have heard all the stories nokia biggest phone company out Kodak 95% of the film industry with them and within years few years from 95% of the film industry to a stock market that fell down by more than 95% and liquidated blockbuster the largest video chain in the world so the key thing is this if you are running a company today and if you think you're doing well and you're so happy with yourself let me warn you one thing it's not going to last 
because you are going to have to fight. There's a book called The Battle for Relevance. You are going to have to fight to see how are you going to stay relevant. That's why you see companies like Facebook. Why is Facebook? Why did they buy Instagram? Why did they buy WhatsApp? They buy these things because they do know that they cannot be sitting there on top forever. And they have to do something. So if you look at Microsoft, in the early days, buying Hotmail, bought in LinkedIn Learning, they buy. Why do they buy? Because they are in a position and they know some next big thing will come in. And that next big thing will just knock them off. And that's why they are there. I tell my staff every day, hello, we are doing okay now. But we cannot sit here and do nothing. Okay? So, I, I put it, Darwin put it this way. It is not the strongest, nor the most intelligent of species that will survive, but the one most adaptable to change. That is who survives. So, your companies, your business have to become change masters. You have to know how to change. You know, so I always say, Toffler put it, the illiterate of the future will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. This has to be a mantra in your business. Every day you have to think. If you look at it, what I tell the, the, the guys is from an, a, a book I read by an, Aust, you know, a, a, an entrepreneur uh, from Australia, one of the top entrepreneurs. He said, the thing they constantly ask themselves is this, what can we do that's a generation better? What can we do that's a generation better? You see, when I think back in the old days, I remember in the 70s, I'll sit in my father's car, we had a cartridge. You know, the cartridge is a big thing. You put it in the car, and in the car you can probably have five or six of this because it took so much space, the glove compartment, we fully five cartridges. We had a big cartridge. Then from the cartridge, we switched to the cassette. The cassette, the little tape. We put it in, that thing will always come out. And then we used to use the big pen and turn and turn and turn to get the thing back inside. After that came the CD. When the CD came out, we said, my God, this is thin, takes less space, fantastic. People were buying CDs as investment. We buy this and we keep, it will have some great value. Of course, somewhere in there, people were thinking, what can we do as a generation better? Then came the MP3 player. The small MP3 player, 100 songs, 200 songs, they store it in the MP3 player, Sony, when they came up with that. Suddenly, they realized storage is limited. The whole music industry was changed by a technology company, Apple, with iTunes. Of course, before that, you had Napster doing it illegally and whatever it is, but they changed it. And all of a sudden, music's on the cloud, you have access to a million songs, and this. How did this happen? Because they asked, what can we do that's a generation better? They look at the problems. Every one of us who's an entrepreneur, our job is what, you know, finding and solving problems. That's it. It's as simple as that. Our job is to find problems and solve these problems. That's it. And if you're an entrepreneur, it's to solve the problems with the idea of making a profit. If you're an NGO, then you're doing it for social good. So an entrepreneur's job is not to go around unless you're a social entrepreneur. Your job is to say, can I find this problem? This is a problem. The bigger the problem, the better. When I'm out on holiday, wherever I go, I'm always looking for problems. What's the problem? In my industry, I'm always looking for problems. And that's what you should be doing. Look for problems. So relevance is a key thing. The biggest thing all of us face is, even as an individual, say today you're a football player. You're the biggest football player in the world. You're earning 100,000 pounds a week. Tomorrow you retire. Your career ends earlier than others. How are you going to reinvent yourself? Are you going to become a manager, a football manager, a football coach? Are you going to, you know, so one of the few people who have actually succeeded in earning more post-career is David Beckham. He suddenly became a brand ambassador. He suddenly became here, wanted in ads, in this, in that, you know, working for big, big multi-organizations as a, as a spokesperson. And all of a sudden, he's reinvented himself. But we all have this problem. We all have to think, how are we going to stay relevant? Whether it's your business, yourself as an individual, and it's, okay? Now, the next thing is, how do you stay relevant? A key thing is to learn. Gandhi put it this way, live as if you'll die tomorrow, learn as if you'll live forever. And that is true. All my happiest place in the world is a bookshop. You leave me there for 10 hours, I'll try and read unless the books are wrapped. Okay, now everything is online on our phone. We've got thousands of books, videos, things to learn. You have to learn. Charles Remendes Jones put it this way. The person you are today and five years from now depends on two things. The books you read and the people you meet. That's it. So, constantly learn. You have to constantly learn. And one of the key things today is, the next thing, so, so far I've talked about purpose, I've talked about values, I've talked about relevance, I've talked about learning. The fifth one is this, build competencies. 
for your business and for yourself as an individual. The future is all about building competencies. In the old days, you could sit down, just read something here, there, and be happy. But today, you may have to know things like, depending on your business, you may have to know, how do I use social media? How would I do digital marketing? Can I pick up a new language? If I'm going to be based in another country, can I learn a new language? If, for example, even a competency, playing the guitar and singing, competency, whatever, preparing a PowerPoint slide is a competency. Doing a presentation is a competency. Being able to speak is a competency. Using simple things like word is a competency. If we take us, wherever we are 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, whatever it is, what will shock most of us is this. Although we have been on this planet maybe for 30, 40, 50 years, we are only about eight, seven, eight things we can really do. I can speak English and write. I can speak Tamil. I can speak maybe Malay. I can do something on word. Maybe about 20, 15 things. I can play the piano. Okay, fine. I can do what we can do. So you shouldn't waste this life that has been given to you. You should be trying to figure out what competencies can I pick up that will be useful in my work or for the business. Now, how do I tie this to a business? If you are running a business, you might say, we need competency in project management more. We need competency, say, in going global or going international. We may need greater competency in certain technology areas. We may need competencies in digital marketing to strengthen, to be able to push our brand across. So you identify, list, these are the competencies we have as a business. These are the competencies we really need. And you look at the big companies, and you see, what competencies do they have that we need? So if you want to go international, you want to really go out globally, what are the things, what are the gaps? And you build your competencies. And I'm very much in favor of what I call a, what has been called a polymath. A polymath is a person who learns across multiple areas, multiple fields. To give you an example, okay, Winston Churchill was a polymath. The most famous polymath who ever lived was uh, Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci. Mark Zuckerberg was a polymath. You know why? When he did Facebook, he went and also studied psychology because he needed to know how to get people hooked to Facebook, how to get people, you know, make it part of habit, make them there. So this is another point, build competencies. Every business that wants, whether the competency is marketing, whether the competency is to be able to reduce expenses, whether the competency is, you know, to be able to manage projects, whether the competency is, you know, being able to hire, Every business, ultimately, the strength depends on the competencies and capabilities they have. Okay? Now, the next one is your brand. Building and protecting your brand. Your most important, many of you don't realize it, and, and, and many people just run a business and they don't care at all about their brand. I'm doing the work. And a brand doesn't mean you have a logo. That's not a brand. That's part of something that represents them. People see the logo, they recognize your brand. But a brand is everything, how, how your entire business is perceived by the world out there, your customers, the greater public. I'll give you an example. Coca-Cola, okay? Coca-Cola, I read the book written by next year, Coca-Cola, about 15 years ago. And one interesting thing about that book is basically that if every Coke had factory, you know, every factory in the world had burned down for Coca-Cola, they would still be able to raise 80 billion US in funding with nothing except the Coke recipe. That's how strong a brand is. So when you look at Apple, Amazon, you know, and this, that's why I think companies in India and in, in here, Southeast Asia, have to do more to increase their brand. Okay? Now, um, after they are talking about brand building, I just want to let you see this one slide. Uh, was that the end of the thing or a warning as I've got two minutes left or something? Sorry? Two minutes, are oh, brilliant. Okay, now, uh, so building a brand, and the last thing I'll talk about is, I'll just talk about impact. Today, we live in a, in a different world. Today, what you should look at, you know, like Henry Ford, when he was asked, what do you think success is? He said, success is when you've done more for the world than the world has done for you. And I think more companies should be looking at, not the bottom line, in the normal sense of just profits, but the triple bottom line. People, planet, profits, in that order. You put your people first. These people will be your employees. If you look after them, they look after your customers, your customers, and the community in general. I call it my colleagues, my customers, my community. These three, put your people first. Then, the planet. 
because we need to leave something for the kids. You know, our kids, the next generation have to have something. And finally, profits. And if you move on this triple bottom line, these are the companies that are going to do better in the future. To give a simple example for us, during the pandemic, under the BAC group, we helped about half a million people. 200,000 with food provision for, fam you know, for people to have. 200,000 with free education. We trained 6,000 entrepreneurs. We trained 8,000 people in tech courses, all of which we funded to help people get through the pandemic. You know, and we are not a big organization. We are a private family-owned entity. Imagine what big companies and giant entities are able to do. So this one, take a photo of this. This actually has 50 different things. I covered six with you all today because I had 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Actually, each one of it, I can do a two-hour class because I'm actually, for all intents and purposes, a teacher. I've been teaching for 30 over years, but I'm an educator and an entrepreneur. So just take a photo. If you look at it, you will be, it will help you. Okay, in the sense that some of it, these are things I've learned from all over, from experience and books and whatever. And the last one is, yeah, that's my email and that's my phone number. Please take a shot. If any time you need an help, an idea, something you want to bounce off, feel free to call me and so on. And if you are looking, we are taking our education business now globally. For those of you who want to set up a university in seven days, just give me a tinker. We have something new, we're opening all over in India, in Sri Lanka, in Burma, in, I mean, sorry, in Brunei, all over. We have something now that's very new, which because of the pandemic, we got it. So that's it. I want to thank IBCN for inviting me. I apologize for speaking really quickly. Anything you want to ask, just WhatsApp or email me. Okay, take care. Thank you.